welcome everybody to episode 205 of the China Show. I'm so excited about our show today. It's going to be an awesome one. It's going to be a fun one. It's going to be an action-packed one. <laughs> it's Friday. It's Good Friday. Yeah, let's make it a Good Friday. Yes, we'll make it a Good Friday. It's already Good Friday, but we'll make it a better Friday. Yes, exactly. Let's call this Better Friday. And again, we invite everybody to take a look at the fallen bike in the background. Ah, we're doing and, Pick Up the Bike today. And we implore the entire populace of Beijing, where this footage was taken, to please pick up the bike. Is that bike still lay in there? Yeah. After o- over a year now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just so you know, it's it is half in the street. If I move out of the way, you can see like the wheel is out in the streets on the sidewalk. But you know, with the amount of people walking past, hopefully somebody will pick it up today. Pick up a- the bike. Anyway, guys, we've got such a massive show uh, lined up for you. So we're just going to start by sauntering right into it with what's new, and of course, we're going to show you what's new, and this is what's new. <laughs> This has been posted around a little bit, and there's this this very patriotic man carrying a Mao Zedong sex doll up a hill. <laughs> and <laughs> what? <laughs> Can we wait yeah. a little bit into the show before we drop words like that? Okay, sure. Well, and you have what's your source that this is a sex doll? <laughs> My source is that I made it the. F- God. There it is. Okay. No, but quite seriously, all right? So he's, it is, it's a Mao real doll. It's a Mao real doll. He's carrying it up the hill. He's giving it a, a massage. You know what I would do instead? What? I would, I don't know, maybe slap it or something. <laughs> oh, Wouldn't yeah, you? yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll give you a Mao slap. You are a Mao zedong. But getting back to it, right? Just getting back to it. This is the kind of ridiculous nonsense that uh, um, borderline hysterical nationalism I can do. Truly truly wish you had shown me this earlier because of the Mao statue museum I went to. Right. They had a man literally like this that mm-hmm. worshipped Mao, wouldn't even let me walk in front of the Mao statue, yes. made me dress up like him, Yeah. put my arm on him, made sure the Mao statue was perfect, and kissed the Mao statue and ran this all by himself because he oh. worshipped Mao so much. He wasn't old. He was my age. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. You anyway, this. this this is a, a thing. Anyway, just a little bit of a co- cultural guy. insight. <laughs> it could be him. I have photos and I did a whole YouTube video there. Yeah, yeah, just some cultural insight. Sure. So anyway, just to tell you, a Mao statue like this, if I mean, real doll, whatever you want to call it, if you want to, um, you know, replicate what this man has done, you can, but it'll cost you about eight thousand dollars. Yeah, this is a Zhongshan Grand Orient Wax Art Company. By the way, I did find a white monkey job promoting this uh, factory, which is funny. Hold on, wait, wait, wait! Don't okay. give it away. So yeah, if you buy one Mao statue like this guy did, a wax statue, which is definitely what happened at this Mao museum I went to, yeah, with a, with a crazy weirdo that made me dress up like Mao. Yeah. So I was violated. Yes, bizarre. I had to put clothes on. Yeah, in front look, of him. Yeah. <laughs> or else he wouldn't let me like be there. Interesting. Anyway, uh, eight thousand dollars, right? Mm-hmm. This is obviously if you're a, a stupid foreigner, though, because okay. if you're in China, you're definitely gonna get a discount. Oh yeah. You know the the, the factory, right? But I have good news. What? No, stop. What? If you buy over 50 pieces. Yes. If you buy 50 of these, Mm -hmm. or 51. If you buy 51, uh, equal to, sorry. If you buy 50 of these, it's only $6,300 each. Each. Yeah. Well, I can certainly think of many applications where you need 50 mal, like, real dolls. I was more interested in what else they sold. Okay, well, Um, let's take a quick look. Yeah, let's have a look. You Mm. can get a... A uh, high simulation celebrity businessman lifestyle wax statue. I don't know if you know if that resembles. Does that resemble anyone to you? Um, no, not really. It's unique. Maybe I'll go check on Facebook and see if any of my <laughs> friends look like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, what's yeah. this one? Simulation. Hold on, hold on. I missed the description on that one. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Because right. we have to guess who it is. Simulation Oscar Idol statue sexy male lifelike wax statue yeah sexy male okay let's have a look closer look at him maybe you can get an idea let's pause that there wow huh? mm. Mm. resembles <laughs> i'll get us out of there for a second that's His creepy hair needs a bit of grease i think yeah yeah exactly you notice how he has mao hair yeah he does actually it's interesting that I, is ridiculous i just wanted to show you <laughs> you are probably curious yeah. as to what pose he comes in because yeah. by the way these are not poseable 
Is there a well, wax statue? But that other one was posable, the yes. one the guy was carrying. This around. one is not. This is a wax statue. Okay. It comes in this pose. Literally him yeah. thinking while he's shitting with clothes on. Interesting. Like mm. squatting over a squat toilet. Yeah, it this looks that way. This is John Travolta wax yeah. version. Ob- obviously, yeah. Oh, it looks like that. Ooh, aren't ooh, they going to get into trouble? That's kind oh. of like a Dalai Lama. You can't sell that in China. Oh, man, they're going to be in trouble. Mm. But you know how they get away with it? They just say wax monk. Wax monk. Wax monk. Yeah, you just want to get a wax monk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You notice, like, I'm just actually oh, sorry. morbidly curious. Yeah. Can you legally make wax statues out of someone's likeness, profit thousands of dollars per piece off of them, just because you leave their name out of it? Mm, I feel like that that's not okay. I f- yeah, I feel like how do you pursue that, though, like in China? You can't. No. They'll tell you to F off. Anyway, um... <laughs> Let's move on to el- what else is new. So here's something that happened. John Travesty. Yes. <laughs> Can you show- hold on? Okay, you want to see Put it again? This up, yeah. And this in- instead, you co- in- imagine someone's like, "Is that John Travolta?" And someone says, "No, that's John Travesty." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of is John Travesty. It's horrible. It's horrible. Okay, so uh, here we go. It's something happened just the other day. Look, 2024, March 17th, okay? Yeah, so there's one version with voice in it that I'll, I'll actually play for you after this. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, and this is, again, just very indicative of uh, just China in general. What's with this music? We're going to get hit by copyright. Uh, mute, mute. I'm going to mute it. Okay. We always I'll, get I'll give hit. you the audio version later. Okay. All right. So there's a woman walking in in a side road here, and she sees a plank, right? So ah. what's she going to do? There's a plank over there. What right? would you do? Um, I guess if I was bored, I'd investigate. So she's like, mm, I wonder what's under this plank. Let me see. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I feel like it's it's very difficult to do that, I feel. There's a couple... <laughs> I mean, can you go back to it? I mean, I'm that? just sorry to laugh. I know. I don't I like know, to laugh at people injuring themselves. For but sure. But... Like what but is I mean, the, like how like, do, here? Let me let me let me think you, about the thought you, process. Oh, yeah. what is this wood doing here? I wonder. I wonder if there's a hole under. I like it. it I bet there's no hole <laughs> under it. She lifts it up and then steps in the hole. You know what I mean? That's what she does. She actually just why d- just. Hear me out. Yeah, yeah. Why is her gut instinct, yeah. when lifting up the plank, to immediately take a step forward? <laughs> don't you know what I mean? No. It's like when you're playing a video game and you accidentally yeah. hit forward yeah. and you fall off a cliff or something. Yes. Her instinct was, let me take a step. I'm going to lift it up yeah. and step and forward at the, at the same, same time. time. With, uh, you know... Th- like, it's with confidence. Predictable results. It's with confidence she takes yeah. that step. Anyway, look, she's obviously uh, a bit stuck there, right? Which is better than falling down. Yes. But into this, a manhole. This clip's not over. No, because this again shows a quite a big insight into Chinese culture, uh, societal culture, I should say, right now. Here's a delivery guy, sees her there. She's obviously like calling for help or something. He's like, whatever. See ya. Bye. Not my problem. And that is a that's a huge issue in Actually, China. I got I have an audio version. Can you go oh, back you do? to the interaction now? I'll just play that. No, no, no. I'll, okay, yeah. you'll do. You, you're gonna. Well, I just yeah. I have yeah. Okay. What happened here? Okay, so what happened exactly over here? <laughs> accurate, accurate. Yeah, okay, that's really what happened. There. Yeah, I got you. She said, "Please help yeah. me." And he said, yeah. nah. Anyway, apparently, legend has it that to this day she's still there. She's still there. She's yeah. stuck there. Mm-hmm. It's just like the bike. Yeah. Exactly. This is like like a human application of pick up the bike. Yeah, this human application of yeah, pick up the woman instead of pick up the bike. It's like freaking Looney Tunes, dude. Yeah, it is. (laughs) Anyway, there's a clip here I'd like to show all of you here. This is Beijing. First thing I'd like you to notice is just the sky for a second here. Um, Did you throw in the AQI? uh, No, I didn't. Sorry. I'll pull it up. Yeah, you can pull it up. It's probably okay today. You know. Did it rain? Yeah. Uh, Anyway, here's the thing. You know, China's been having this big push. I'm going to make, make ourselves big for this. China recently has had this huge push where they've um, granted visa-free entry. Um, Beijing's 161. So today it's 161, which is what? What is that? Post-rain, by the way. That's after rain. And it's, that means unhealthy. Okay. Uh, why don't you... We are currently 23. 23. Yes. Okay, so we're 23 in, yes. in, you know, in our area. Yeah. In Beijing, it's 161. You can look up the AQI of your area, yes. but that's not good, okay? Yeah. People that say that China's defeated pollution and all that nonsense, is they're, they're always talking crap because you can see it. The sky don't lie, as we always say. 
And AQI don't lie is another thing. You can look it up. So anyway, this push to bring tourists into China has been a big propaganda push. And they've gotten a lot of these influencers to go in there and like, wow, China is so safe. It's so modern. I can't believe it. You know, my first time taking a high-speed rail. You know, all this uh, tourist fluff stuff, which is fine. Fair enough. Go have a nice tourist thing. But one thing people don't realize is that China is still incredibly unfriendly and unwelcoming to foreigners. And this is a very good example. I'm just going to play this out, okay, this clip for a little bit, and we're going to discuss it. Okay. They want to take a visit. We are tourists. They 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 are tourists. Okay, so <clears throat> where this is, is this is just uh, outside of Tiananmen Square, you know, in the Forbidden City, you know, the place of the Mao portrait. Uh, we've both been there, been there multiple times. Actually, the first time I went there was a long time ago. It must have been like 2012 or something, maybe even before 2010. Yeah, it was probably about 2010. And I just so happened to go to Beijing on the anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre, and I didn't know that. <laughs> and I went sure. to... No, I, I honestly sure. didn't know it, because, it, it, you know, like... Popped uh, up in your floop, and you're like, oh, better go today. No, I just... I was there on, a like, one of those stupid um, business white monkey type trips I told you about. Sure. So anyway, I'm, like, got a day off. I'm going to go look around. I went on the subway to Tiananmen Square, and they wouldn't allow me in because I was a foreigner. I couldn't get out of the subway. They wouldn't allow me. I thought you were going to start round two. Yeah, because, you know, it's the... It's the anniversary, and You're I guess lotus pose that people are going to like pull out a free Tibet yeah. flag or something, whatever. <laughs> it's you know? always Falun Gong they're looking at. Yeah, for. exactly. But anyway, I wasn't allowed to go in there. Um, subsequent times I went to Beijing, there's always heavy security around there. If you exit the subway, you still have to take go through like a tent where they have bag scanners, and you have to show your passport. If you don't have your passport or your identification, you cannot be in the area. Mm. And as you can see here, these poor tourists, they turn out to be German tourists, and they have a Chinese tour guide, which, of course, you need a bloody minder, don't you, these days? Um, it's North Korea it, now. It's the same thing. Yeah. All they're doing is riding in the bike lane that goes past Tiananmen Square, right? So they've obviously paid for some kind of little cycle tour around Beijing, and this dude takes them around, okay? They are stopped, and if they didn't have this tour guide with them, it'd be very difficult, they're stopped and the police demand that their passports get scanned on this machine. And of course, their facial scans, they need photos of them as well. The tour guide had to show a digital itinerary of every place that they're supposed to go. And also the photos of them North to Korea. prove. I mean, I just want to put this out here. Is this a, a tourist friendly thing? No. You know, it's a Pyongyang can, can you imagine that if people wanted to go and see the White House or the Washington sure. Monument or something, that they would have to show their passport to the police and everywhere they're going and get their biometrics taken yes. and have seven billion trillion security cameras watching them everywhere they go? Yeah, exactly. I mean, can you imagine that anywhere in the world? Just think of any tourist destination anywhere in the world. It's wild. It's gotten so bad. <clears throat> now. Yeah. So this just shows actual proof of what it really what it really is because you know China says one thing and does another. Yeah, yeah they're like we're wide open. You don't welcome. Visas. Come see you don't for yourself anymore. You can go see anything you like, and then it's yeah. meanwhile it's Pyongyang tour. Yeah, exactly. You know, you, know, you see this a lot with Xinjiang because yes. you know Xinjiang. Everybody yeah. knows there's a lot of trouble in the the west yes. of China. Yes. Uh, but genocide. China's always like, come to Xinjiang, see for yourself. Nothing's wrong here. You have someone arrives and they like, they bloody came, <laughs> arrest them. <laughs> you know, make sure yeah. they can't see anything. Yeah, know? they can go in this one square. Yeah, exactly. They can go to only these designated spots. What? One of them got away. Is <laughs> and I, I trying to take a bus out somewhere? Yeah. Stop that bus. We know. So I could tell stories. Yeah. We'll tell it some other time. But uh, it's yeah. Scary. Anyway. Just, let's just let this play out because, um, you know, like after. Oh, I know. I Just, um, you know, let's be honest. 
You have to go through all this hassle, and what do you get? <laughs> what do you get? Seam out in smog. <laughs> yep, get exactly. Get burning lungs. But I mean, seriously, they didn't even go. They just was riding through the bike lane. They mm. didn't even get out to walk around or anything. Mm. So they're just passing the area. Yes. All right. Again, China's not friendly to tourists, and it's not no. convenient. And as a foreigner, you cannot stay in hotels unless it's designated that foreigners can stay in it. So it's not like anywhere else in the world that you just go, you look up on Booking.com, oh, I'm going to this city and I'm going to stay in a hotel. You heard it here. Mm -hmm. If you go to Beijing, you will end up decompressing too fast, and you will turn inside out like Ronald Schwarzenegger. <laughs> just to let yes, you know. Exactly. You will know. That will happen. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, with that so kind of careful. air quality, yeah. Don't do it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that uh, nonsense aside, what do we got next? Yes. Everybody, are you excited? Xiaomi, uh, the, smart, the smartphone maker, has just wowed the world by um, introducing this dream car. It's called the Xiaomi SU7. By the way, Xiaomi translated means millet. <laughs> so the millet... Yo, what do you drive? Yo, I got a millet. Yeah, got millet, a millet, bro. bro. I got you a know, millet phone. You, you know, like small rice? Yeah. Yeah, millet. Yeah, like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because that's what Xiaomi means, is small rice, by the way. So millet, um, the millet SU7 has just been released, okay? Okay. Um, it looks very familiar. It does, and the thing Weird. that... Weird, it looks exactly like something I've seen before. Mm, yeah, Ooh, I wonder what that could be. How come I've never heard it before? How come I've never yeah. heard, seen, <laughs> seen this seen car before. before? Oh, but yeah. I have. Yeah, that's wow. right. Let's, let's take a look. I get kind of annoyed because um, the press has been going crazy, but okay, let's take a look here. You've got the, the Porsche uh, Taycan. It's a Taycan, Taycan, whatever okay. it is, that electric car. It's an car. electric car. Porsche. Yes. And it, that's the one on the top. That's the one we've that we're alluding to that we've seen in yes. real life. And the bottom one is the Xiaomi SU7. Let's see. Oh, wow. What do you know? You gotta be kidding me. It's the same it's car. It's the same car. It is exactly we, the so same car. So here's the deal. We scoured the internet trying to find articles because they're talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to find normal articles on any news outlet, Fox, CNN, whatever, all mm -hmm. this stuff. They're talking about this car. Yeah. Not necessarily praising it, but they're talking about it because it's like a big deal. Everyone's like, oh, you know, Xiaomi right. just entered the market. Yeah, yeah, so it's news, right? Yeah, it's like... No right. one's saying it looks like a Porsche Taycan. No, everybody's just like, oh, it's affordable and it's a sports car. It's the I mean, same car. The, look at, even the wheels are copied. Yes. Okay, they copied the different variations of wheels. Everything about this is just a plain... You know what's interesting, though? Dirty copy. What? It is... That makes, you know, that Porsche Taycan came out first, obviously, right? Oh, yeah. It's been would, out for like a more than a year now, two years or something. That means the millet copy. Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of like younger. And maybe oh, younger. oh yeah, yeah. Maybe it's like... Yeah, Whoops, oh, sorry. I didn't do it properly. Yeah, younger and beautiful. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. So, you know, um, I just wanted to, again, show another picture just to prove. I mean, you, you can't make this up. It's the same car. Everything from the windows to the B pillars to, to the, the wall. To the, yeah, exactly. To the, yeah. I mean, look at the, the sort of plastic guard uh, on the bottom to the lip. But to those the... wheels, they look like balls. <laughs> <laughs> they do that. It, yeah. looks, it does look shittier. Yeah, this is, of course, quite common in China. Yes. But before I even get onto this one, um, guys. It's the <clears> same <throat> car. Why? And here's what annoys me is you see all the motoring press and you see all these articles on CNN and stuff. Everybody's like, look at this great, like they've entered the market. It's great. All this nonsense. Why are people not pointing out the fact that this is just a, a product of theft? This is a dirty thief has stolen not only the design, but all the R&D that went into the Taycan. So, you know, presumably, I mean, not presume, appearance, no, I'm saying appearance, yes. right? we don't know how it drives. Yeah, of course. But yeah. like the, they obviously took one and reverse engineered it and yeah. figured out everything and they just copied it. Sure. You know, and they're like, oh, just change it a little bit, you yeah. know, yeah. so that, uh, you know, like it's probably like, on a shitty drivetrain, to be honest. It'll be whatever. EVs are pretty easy to make a drivetrain. It's That's like, true. it is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. Here's the thing, though, like um, we shouldn't be rewarding this kind of behavior. Okay, because Porsche spends millions, billions on their design and their R&D, right? Yes. They created something. They brought it to market, something unique, something very special, something very Porsche. Okay, and because of their good name and yes. because of their history, people like it and they buy it. Yes. But this Chinese copy, this, this real cheap, rubbish, Yo. millet copy. I'm sorry, right. but there's like tons of like... 
Wuma that just entered the chat. And oh, they're yeah? like, that's nonsense. It's not the same at all. It's exactly the same. So this millet <laughs> In copy, our opinion, then, okay? You can yeah. have your own opinion. This millet copy steals the design, so they didn't have to spend any money on design. They're literally like, take that and copy it. Mm. And all the R&D that went into, because it's not just R&D of the actual manufacturing, it's the R&D of and, um, market research to see what people desire and what uh. they want and what's going to work, uh. right? They take in all that for free. Then on top of that, the Chinese government subsidizes EVs in uh. China, uh, and especially a company like Xiaomi, which is a CCP darling company. Sure. So they're able to produce this cheap, dirty copy of the Porsche and then release it into the world and release it onto the market. And people are like, yeah, that's great. It's cheaper and it's just as good. And it looks great. You know why it looks great? Why you think it looks great? It's because it's just a copy of something that was designed to look great and something that actually looks great, mm. you know? So this is the way we stifle innovation, right? Because why should a company go through all the trouble of developing something and making something and innovating something if China's just going to copy it and undercut them on the market? You know, it's going to end up in a situation where people just stop. They just don't bother. I'm trying so hard to see differences here. It's I'm the same I'm trying so hard. I mean, maybe that thing on the back... What thing like on the, the bumper? Because there's like an indent. It's so slight. No, I know. I'm just saying. I'm looking. I'm hunting. I mean, there are tiny little differences, but that's what they do to say yeah, like, yeah, it's not sure. the same. Yeah. It's stupid. It's like somebody copying someone's homework and just yeah. all the capital letters they write them in lowercase. Right. Oh, or look, spell I didn't a copy. Words are wrong. Yeah, exactly. Swap a few words around. <laughs> yeah. It's dumb. It's dumb. Just wanted to point that out. But of course, China it does this all the time. Remember this? Yeah, Zotier? cover these, and then I'll read what what they're actually the audacity they have. Right yeah. Now. Okay, so this is a Zotia, which is obviously just a copy a of the Porsche, Porsche McCann. McCann. They love copying Porsches, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and there's that dolphin thing that's a Porsche yeah. box to copy, all that kind of nonsense. I mean, that's just like verbatim. Yeah. Now, um, one thing I'm pretty sure they won't copy is the safety of a Porsche. Yeah. And this is related kind of tangentially. It's not really related, but here's the thing, guys. Uh, just a, about a week or two ago, actually, in, in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Is that how you say it? Mm-hmm. It's an interesting name. Why is it named after a person? I don't know. Okay, all right. I'm not from there, dude. Okay, fair. I'm just wondering if you knew. No. You know, it's your own country. Anyway, the thing is, in Ann Arbor, Michigan... I'll um, look it up while you, while you check. Okay, this is in the Chinese news. I got this from, by the way. Uh, three Chinese students studying in Ann Arbor, Mich- Michigan, went out and got horrendously drunk. And apparently the guy... There was one guy and two girls, and the guy... Um, borrowed this Porsche from his friend to kind of, you know, show off. Mm -hmm. So he went and got drunk with these uh, girls and then they were driving, well, they left and they were driving drunk, but he was like, you know, showing off to them and he's like, why don't you drive it? And he let one of the girls drive it. Police suspect alcohol was involved. Well, I mean, no, according to the Chinese news, I'm verbatim copying. Oh, you're copying. verbatim copying this the is, Chinese news. So, you know, the, you can read this in Chinese, yeah, yeah, right? Sure. I, this is not like... American news where they yeah, have to yeah. say allegedly yeah, speed was involved in this accident. That's true. Like, in Chinese news, they were like they got drunk and they crashed. <laughs> yeah, they're very true. pragmatic. Okay, sure. so in the Chinese news where I got this from, <clears throat> the uh, the guy said to, was showing off how fast it is and stuff, mm. and he got one of the girls, a nineteen year old girl, to drive it. Mm. Now this nineteen year old girl was drunk and didn't have a license, mm. so that's a kind of a double whammy. And I guess you can guess what the result of this uh, little incident was. And this is the police um, released this video. As we can see, this is the Porsche Taycan, by the way, the one that Xiaomi copied. All right. And you can see that is one hell of a, an accident. If you see it in real time speed, that is, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's scary. But here's the thing. They all survived. That's the reason we brought this up. Yeah. Is that that's they the all car. Survived. And they survived inside the car. They survived because the, of the Porsche's safety standards. Yeah, you can't copy the safety standards. So, I mean, do Usually. that Do that in a Xiaomi. Let's see what happens in, in, the in, a, in a millet. And we'll see. Anyway. Um, dead, you'd be dead in a millet. I'll tell you what. <laughs> yeah, in a millet second. In a New York millet. Yeah, exactly. Um, anyway, yeah. Ann Arbor was named after the land speculators. Uh, two guys bought it, right? Josh Allen and Elijah Walker. Mm-hmm. Both of their wives' names were Anne, so they named it after her. And the arbor? An arbor means a, an arbor. Like a harbor? Like, oh, that. So it's <laughs> yeah. like a harbor. Is a, an arbor is a harbor without an Arbor Day? H. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. arbor. I know arbor. Yeah. It well, just didn't click to me. It's Anne's arbor, <laughs> right? You get it? It was just like some old British dude or something like, uh, bring me an arbor. 
I knew chat was just <laughs> like a chalk. I t- went away from chat for two seconds yeah. there and there was a shit ton of Ann Arbor de- definitions. I could have just read chat. You could have just read chat. Anyway, it's Slopaganda time. It's actually my personal favorite part of the show. Yes. All right. Slopaganda is when China puts out propaganda, but it doesn't really, it kind of falls a bit flat. What do you reckon? Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's take a look at today's Slopaganda. And it's some of our favorites here. Well, Oh, we're starting with Beyond the no. Garrett. Well, well, it's a surprise. Did you you did that? It's you, a surprise. I, remember, I told you about this. I cut it. Remember? I cut remember? it. I think you may have put that in there. No, 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 oh, no. You don't think no, so? no, no, okay. no, 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 no. Well, anyway, uh, Beyond the Great <laughs> Firewall today is okay. a segment where we talk about things that you can only see on the Chinese internet. Yeah. And you might need us to translate them into Chinese for you. Yes. And it's stuff that you're probably not meant to see. Mm-hmm. And it's also trends and viral things that are happening on the Chinese internet. Because remember, China blocks everything from the outside from coming in, it's like yeah. North Korea. But at the same time, they don't want outsiders seeing what's happening on the inside of their internet. Yeah. It's its own ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. So first off, we have a, well, I mean, how would you describe it? This is what a design. Yeah, I'll get that out of there. Um, Talking about the designer, I guess. But if you can see here, this is um, just how many toilets this, are here? Oh, there's got to be like a hundred in there or something. Yeah, there's a lot, and this is probably some kind of military barracks or something. Because yeah, I don't like see where, where else this is, or it could be a factory. You know, I've seen. I it could be a factory. I saw a factory before where it was like this, but there wasn't toilets. It was just a trench. Yeah. Oh no, trench is I've, more common. I I saw just a this trench. This is luxury. Yeah. Now. For those of you who don't know, these are squat toilets. Yeah. And the way that they're lined up, you would this have is to not training for the human centipede. Stop. <laughs> Stop. I I actually just want to point out that if people were using this, because obviously you, a bunch of people are supposed to use it at the same time, why would you have a hundred toilets? Are those cameras up in the I corner? Honestly, want to say no, but I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, maybe it's lights. Let's just say they're lights for yeah, now. They're lights. But here's the thing: people would have to stand single file yeah you would have to stand behind someone and you'd have to be crouching down taking and a turd and watching somebody taking a turd in front of you you would actually see turd come out this is horrible this is a nightmare this is a dream for some people <laughs> yeah i mean it's possible germans yeah <laughs> maybe some japanese who knows. <laughs> But I just got to tell you guys, no, quite it's seriously. Something about excess power. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> true. This is a night. This is a nightmare for anyone. It's a crap okay. Congo if, line. If <laughs> crap Congo line, <laughs> guys. Okay, seriously. <laughs> anyone who cares about privacy and personal space, this is their nightmare. Can you imagine? <laughs> uh, you know what I want? What I want to be the only guy in there. Okay. I just want to experience And then, like, that. hop from one. I'm not, it doesn't matter what I do. I just want to be the only one yeah. in this pa- palatial mansion. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to be Crouching Tiger Hidden shit. Yeah. You know, the only dude. Ugh. Yeah, that's 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 pretty nasty. I, I'd like to hope that it's not always You saw always it here first capacity. on the China show. What's that? I would like to hope it's not always in full capacity. Well, there's no reason why they would have that many unless it was necessary to that's have true. that That's true. It's like, people. now is the time. Hey, hey, forced labor workers, it's time. But that's honestly how it works. There's probably yeah. shifts, you know? No, yeah. So it's either military or factory. Well, it's why, it's why some factories in China put... Uh, toilets in the ca- uh, cameras in the toilets yeah so people don't waste time yeah because they want to the boss needs to be able to check in and be like oh they're just hanging out on their phone yeah right they've already been in there some of them have timers mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. um so this is not this is par for the course yeah and yeah like like you said the trough is actually much less humane like yeah. the trough is bad and the ammonia smell is yeah insane. This, it's I'm one of the like, yeah. traumatized by the trough I, it's one of the things that sh- shocked me about China. Yes. It's one of the first times I went there. And, you yeah. know, the reason I was going there is to take a look at factories yeah. that were making um, security cameras. And one of the factories, I asked to use the bathroom and they told me to go there. The and trough. it was like a trough yeah. for just the workers to all just like. Yeah. I've been was, in a trough. It was like this, but it was just a long trough. I have told this before, mm. but I, there was a trough situation one time at a bus stop. Mm. And it was so apocalyptic. And you, it wasn't just me that couldn't handle it. Like people that walked in literally were coming out like with tears and stuff <laughs> yeah, because yeah. the ammonia was so bad because it hadn't been cleaned. Yeah, and yeah. it's just, there's hundreds, if not thousands of people every 10 minutes going in there. Yeah. Because remember, this is like a capacity for a hundred thousand customers in this bus station in yeah, Dongguan yeah. or something, right? Sure. And 
when you went in there, there was the, a giant, giant trough, but people couldn't even go and wait their turn because they couldn't handle to breathe. So some people were just pissing on the wall and then running out. Yeah. Like holding their mouth like this. Well, I mean, yeah, would you blame him? But again, the lack of privacy in the bathrooms is wild. It's not just the trough. Remember, we've told this before, but I was in this town and I walked in and it was a trough like this lengthwise and yeah. people shitting in it. Some dudes squatting there. Yeah. You know, bits out. Sure. Shitting while reading the newspaper. One guy was on a Game Boy. Yeah, it's interesting. And I had no choice but mm -hmm. to shit next to these people. It's, yeah, it's interesting. There's no barrier. Yeah, now for those of you out there, of course, China's a big place. Yeah, it's yeah, very. You also get very nice, clean, high-tech toilets in certain areas, especially shills like to go to them yes, to show them. There's very like, rare. There's like one that they yeah. go show all the time. But of course, if you're in a tourist area... Um, you're going to see a nice toilet. If you're in a five-star hotel, yeah, yeah. you're going to see a nice, decent toilet. If you're in a shopping mall, you're going to see a nice toilet. Somebody said, so, "Somebody said, where's the toilet paper? Well, oh, there is none. You don't, there's no toilet paper in yeah, China. Yeah, they don't. And we've actually made a whole video about yeah. that on ADV China. You can take a look. But the, the BL and the end all, the TLDR is that people steal the toilet paper. Yeah, so old they ladies. don't. Yeah, so old they don't put toilet paper, paper and you have to carry tissues around with yes. you. And something you learn very quickly in China. Yeah. Anyway, let's uh, continue going. What else we got in uh, Beyond the, the Great concert, Slupaganda? Concert poop area. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is Beyond the Firewall, right? Yes, this is, so, this is still Beyond the Firewall. Yeah, it's still yeah. Beyond the Firewall. So this is a little bit of humor, guys. Um, and this is food-related humor that's been going around China. Yeah, there's a trend right now about food fails. Yes. So anything food fail related, there's been a yeah. lot of clips going around. So, so this guy has cracked a bottle of Mao Tai. Which, which is, is a strong alcohol. It's Baijiu. Yeah, and it's it's you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So he had broken it and he's very sad. So he's uh, taking yeah. advantage of the <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Christ>. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Don't pretend like you haven't been there. Oh, we've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> a lot of food fails this week for some reason. Okay. It's been a thing. It has. Oops, oops. <laughs> Oh, pause that. This is actually a little cultural anomaly. Okay. So, this is called kao manto or kao yeah. kao mianbao. Kao yeah. mianbao. Mm -hmm. uh, kao mianbao is a, like a toast that you grill. Yeah. But you'll only find this up north, and it yeah. was crazy. Like I got used to when I lived up north. I got used to being able to get some lamb skewers. Yeah. Some beef meatballs. Yeah. Some beer, and then I would uh, toast some bread, and yeah. it was just a thing that you do. And then when I went down south, I never found it again. But they have manto, which yes, is but like it's made out of rice. Bread's better, yeah, for sure. You know, but I is, used to it. Is that real bread or is it's that, that bread. sweet? Bread? No, it's real bread. It's real bread. It's real bread. Okay, it's not good bread. No, <laughs> but it's real bread. <laughs> okay, yeah, good it's, stuff. it's savory. Yeah, there there are some very big differences between the north yeah, and the big south. Time. Huh? Uh, they they burnt, they yeah. <laughs> I've even had a garlic butter. Oh, <laughs> There's an ice cream cake. Ling Dango is an yeah. ice cream cake. I think they thought it was a normal cake. Yes, <laughs> yes, I think so too. Oh, I'm going to eat it. Oh, I'm going to eat it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Shake, shake. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. The Let me get us out of here so yeah. like we're probably block blocking some of the action here. Guantou. How do you say guantou? Like jarred fruit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they oh, spiked, spiked the, the, the straw <laughs> all the way through. Yeah. Are in China, you get instant noodles, obviously. It's very popular. Yeah. But you get ones that have like a self-heating element. Oh, that's what that it's was. It's like a yeah. chemical thing. That makes sense. And you like pull a string and then it just cooks it. Yes. Um, which is convenient, but I've always thought it's a little dangerous. And this, a little? This kind of blew up in the guy. Whoa! Yeah. That's boiling hot noodles. Boiling hot noodles right in your face. All right. So, guys, you know our main segment of the show here? We've got we got a lot. We've got Slopaganda coming up next. Mm-hmm. 
which is that silly propaganda stuff, which is, my, like I said, my favorite part of the show. And then we actually have the main topic, which is these crazy things China's done to kind of, which is the majority push of the show towards World War Three. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's coming up. But before that, we have to talk, give you a couple sad. of words about our sponsors. I thought you were going to talk about sad street performers. Yeah, I mean, like, just imagine that's your job and you got to go home, right? Yeah. And you have to now think about cooking a meal. Yeah. That's the the last thing it's you want worst. when you're stressed out. And you could stop off and get this, like, donut you burger could. from it's KFC. Only, it's really the only option. But, like, that's the most unhealthy thing you could have in your entire life. It's true. So why would you? Why would you? you know? Eating better is easy. With Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. We love them. Mm-hmm. Factor meals are absolutely fantastic, convenient, and chef, uh, chef-approved chef ingredients. Yes, never frozen. Never frozen. Absolutely mm-hmm. delicious. We love them. Um, they're dietitian approved and they're ready to go in just two minutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto, and then obviously just normal stuff too. Yeah. Also, there's more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. So what are you waiting for? Get started today. And we honestly think it's one of the best things you can do because yeah. instead of eating crap out of a bag or mm-hmm. some f- junk frozen food or going out and eating fast food, this is the the best alternative you've got. It actually tastes really good. It's fantastic. It's so good. Two-minute meals, yeah. fuel up fast with Factors. Restaurant quality meals that are ready to heat and eat whenever you are. There's pancakes, smoothies, and more. So there's bref- breakfast stuff, mm-hmm. right? There's midday yep. bites. There's no prep, mm-hmm. no mess meals. There's no prepping and cooking or cleanup needed. Mm-hmm. Um, and flexible for your schedule. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing the meals every week. This is not some set in stone plan. You can you can customize this, right? Yeah. It's a perfect solution for fast premium options and that no cooking is required. So head to factormeals.com slash ADV5050 and use the code ADV50 to get 50% off. That's code ADV50 at factormeals.com slash ADV50 to get 50% off the links in the description. Mm-hmm. You, when you support Factor, you not only get delicious meals, but you also support us too. You know, actually a subscriber reached out, you know, cause we've, yeah. this has been our sponsor before. Mm. And they told me they actually lost a bunch of weight. That's awesome. Because they would, you know, cause it's portion control. Oh, that's awesome. So, you know, they just use Factor for that's, like a couple of months and they yeah. lost a ton of and weight. And that's not even what it's for necessarily, no. but the fact that people can have multiple uses for it and find their own convenience is yeah. fantastic. Now Next. we'd like to uh, talk about our other sponsor for today's video, which is of course AG1. Yes. Taking care of your health isn't always easy. Easy, but it should at least be simple. That's why for the last two years, uh, I've been drinking AG1 every day, no exceptions. It's just one scoop, mix of water once a day, every day. Makes me feel focused, energized, nourished. We notice a massive improvement in our health when Absolutely. we started drinking mm-hmm. AG1. You love it. Yep. Yeah. It's great. Tastes great. Mm-hmm. It's super convenient. How long does it take you to whip it up? It's less than a minute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's because each serving of AG1 delivers my daily dose, I should say our daily dose of vitamins and And your daily dose. And pre- If you're and, a human. Yes. Pre and uh, pro, uh, probiotics and more. Mm-hmm. It's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. We absolutely love it. It's high quality ingredients. One of the most deliciously easy, simple things you can do. And when you do drink it, you will feel better. And mm-hmm. you know that you're doing something for your health. You don't have to take handfuls of vitamins. You don't have to run around trying to make smoothies and all this kind of stuff. It's so simple, right? Yep. If there's one product that we had to recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1. And that's why we've partnered with them for so long. So if you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash ADV. That's drinkag1.com slash ADV. Check it out. And the description links in the description. By the way, if you click this link and you go and buy it, you're supporting us too yes. directly. So please do it. Thank you. Excellent. So time to move on to Slopaganda. Now, guys, um, this time around on Slopaganda, we have... Uh, Get us out of here for a second. Yeah. CCP Milk is making a, oh, a comeback. Do you guys remember? They're trying to clone me. Yeah. So when I left, they're like, "Shit, we, we chased need- them out of the country. We mm-hmm. need to make. We need the same person." So yeah. they're like, "But we need them to be British because China loves British people way more than Americans. Mm-hmm. They think they're more like gentlemanly and proper." So they took a British guy and they molded him out of clay. Yeah. And just made a British version of me. I got a quick question for you because for some reason. People keep telling me that you went back to China after you were chased out to sell your property. You know what's interesting? Mm -hmm. There has been a whole rash of these hilarious things. Like, for example, uh, we were we never had a proper visa to live there, so that's why we had to leave. My wife divorced me, by the way. Oh yeah, apparently mine too. Yes, and I'm not (laughs) even joking. Like, no joke. That is a but it's a current theory right now. They're resurrecting this theory 
that that's why you don't see her anymore because mm-hmm. she divorced me. Right, right, right. right. And she hates me. And mm-hmm. she got, you know why she left me? Why? She was so upset that I was saying bad things about the Chinese government. Oh, no. <laughs> that's, that's why. And the newest theory <laughs> is that, well, actually, this is a little bit of older one, but it's been re- resurrected that I, it's totally fine. I actually go back to China. Well, no, I, I want to knock this things. on the head because... Yeah. I, I remember I drove you to the border yes. when we found out yeah. the police were oh, looking for Oh, I have the whole you. video on my so channel. I drove you there yeah. um, and made sure you got over. Yes. And then you left. Yes. But everybody says you came back to sell your property. <laughs> Did you come back to China to sell your property? Because I didn't know about it. No. Well, I pulled the wool over your eyes. I snuck out one night. <laughs> no, <laughs> but seriously, like... No, I did didn't. not. So... I, before I told my audience yeah. that I had left China, I had no plans on, I didn't know if I was going to go back. I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know if this was going to be resolved or, any, yeah. you know. You didn't want to kill your channel potentially yeah. by saying, oh, I'm oh, out I'm of China. Oh, I'm gone, bye. I'm never going to make China content again. So yeah. I, I waited, right? Yeah. In the meantime, we did go back to Hong Kong when we transited to other countries. This, yeah. By the way, this is pre-Hong Kong protests when there wasn't a risk. Sure. You guys have a, you have to have a different perspective on what Hong Kong is now. Yeah. But this was around about 2019, wasn't it? Yeah, but it, it was before Yeah, when we that. flew to Vietnam, yeah. I, I was still living in mainland China. I came in to Taiwan. meet you. I came to... Yeah, we did Taiwan. Yeah. I came to meet you in Hong Kong, and then yeah. we went from there. Anyway, I filmed a, a vlog there. Yeah. where I talked about how I had to sell my property, right? Mm-hmm. Now, later, when I came clean about, um, you know, having to leave China and I did my whole story and I had everything, all my ducks in a row and I finally put it out there, I went and made, a, I think I made like a pinned comment or something mm-hmm. on that video about actually what happened. So you didn't go back to China. No, you sold your property. Not. In Hong Kong. In Hong, you went to Hong Kong. Yes. And you coordinated and with your family, family over the border. Members, yeah. They went across. Okay, so I just wanted to put that to rest yeah, because sure. it's been annoying me because like for whatever reason, when people attack me online, they tend to talk about you going back to sell your property. Because and they think like, that's like what? means it's safe. Uh, I think that means that that uh, you know we're liars or yeah, something, and yeah. that's the main thing. I just wanted to put that to bed. Yeah. Sorry, this is. By the off way, track. You're, did your wife divorce you? Absolutely not. Oh, okay, I'm just, just making sure. Just had a massive. Uh, yeah, we don't have to respond to these no, allegations. No. But anyway, I mean, it's it's <laughs> it's just dumb. People make stuff up all the time, and that's yes. that's no big deal. Yeah. Now, slapaganda time. CCP milk is back. I'm back. British let's, version of me. Let's take a look. I'm going to move us out of here. Um, and let's see. Sam, you've learned the Chinese language and culture for over two decades now. So are there any good tricks in learning the language? Well, as the saying goes, Gong Yu San Qi Shi, Bi Xian Li Qi Qi. And tools like the Xinhua Dictionary are essential for any Chinese language learner. Okay, so um, first of all, I want to compliment CCP Milk on his Chinese. It's very good. He's very good at Chinese. Yeah. Props where props are due, okay? But... This has started out as a, we're going to talk about this dictionary, right? This is a good language learning tool. I'm sorry. What? Can I, can I just ask a question real quick, though? Yeah. Why is the highest profile Chinese propaganda outlet making a video about a dictionary? You'll see. That's it's fascinating. Everything they make uh, propaganda about kind of transforms into one thing. Yes. Actually, in this, in this case, too. I'll just re- rewind it a little bit. So um, let's take a look. So... Now. So are there any good tricks in learning the language? Well, as the saying goes, Gong Yu San And tools like the Xinhua Dictionary are essential for any Chinese language learner. Various editions of the Xinhua Dictionary actually can be found here at the China National Archives of Publications and Culture. The art among the exhibits that President Xi Jinping checked out when he visited here back in June. Oh wow. no, I can't bloody believe it. They got me talking about a bloody dictionary this time. At least my arch nemesis Rick isn't here to spoil it and take the spotlight away from me. I'm really glad that I turned down that dictionary gig in Beijing. I got to come to sunny Hainan and go to the beach instead of talk about a boring dictionary. Oh damn you, Rick. They always pick you for the fun stuff. I'm stuck here with this stupid dictionary sucking on the smog in Beijing. Let's take a look inside. Great. The National Archives serves as a seed gene bank of Chinese culture. Following his trip here, President Xi Jinping reiterated a concept that he himself had introduced. The integration of the basic tenets of Marxism with fine traditional Chinese culture, also known as the second integration. This is actually highlighted by Xi's application of the Chinese culture in his approach to governing the state. Wait a bloody minute here. I thought we were talking about a dictionary. What's all this nonsense about Xi Jinping this, Xi Jinping that? Did Xi Jinping take a turd on the floor? Yeah. Uh. Uh. 
Dictionary. This concept builds on the CPC's first integration theoretical synthesis, integrating the basic tenets of Marxism with China's specific realities. <laughs> <laughs> These exhibits are classic publications of Marxism, localization, and modernization. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Marxism? 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 Oh. But, okay, uh, sorry to pause it halfway through, but I mean, have you seen? Yeah, yeah, it is. Have you seen how ridiculous this is? They're like, this is a good dictionary to learn Chinese. Why don't we go check it out? But Xi Jinping did this. Xi Jinping did that. You know why? That. The, their what? segue is we're going to make a video on the highest level of state media yeah. for propaganda about a dictionary. Let's go see multiple versions of them. Yes. Like, because Xi Jinping <laughs> looked at them. They made a whole ass video. Yeah. 13 minutes long. Yeah, it's 13 minutes. Don't worry, we won't show the whole thing. About a library. Yeah. Not because of the contents of the library. Because Xi Jinping looked at the library. Yes. 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 And who wants to go see various versions of a single dictionary <laughs> anyway? What? Let's be honest. Would you what? do that? That's why CCP Milk, and I do feel bad for him. That's I don't want to make fun of him too much because <laughs> yeah. I can tell he wanted to be a presenter. Mm -hmm. He's always bitter at whoever he has to compete with on they camera. They steal the spotlight. They steal the spotlight because he literally has to make videos about Xi Jinping's dictionary. I know. The fact that, that Xi sucks. Jinping visited a place. Yeah. That's, that's, imagine that's yeah. what you have to cover. Yeah, I know. It's terrible. Anyway, oh. let's uh, let's see where this goes, shall we? Because um, it's always fascinating. Let's continue. Actually, uh, the fine traditional Chinese culture, China's fine traditional culture, the fine traditional Chinese culture, the fine traditional culture, China's fine traditional culture, of China's fine traditional culture. <laughs> President Xi Jinping, yes. President Xi Jinping, as President Xi noted, sees application. President Xi noted, yes, like President Xi himself often uses, as President Xi puts it, is the root of the party's theoretical innovation. Theoretical innovation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Yo, theoretical this innovation. video literally went from <laughs> yeah. we're gonna talk about a dictionary for ten seconds yes. to literally saying Xi Jinping like fifty times. Yeah, and fine, and fine traditional, traditional culture. culture. Yeah, that's a new Chinese. Phrase. Yeah, fine traditional Chinese culture. That's a CCP. Uh, it's one of those sure. things. Like, I guess you have to. If you want to try to change people's minds, you yes. slip it in there. Yes. Like my delicious meals. Imagine you're like a terrible cook. You. Cook the worst <laughs> yes. shit ever. Yes. And you're like, I always serve my delicious meals yes. to my guests. Yes. It's like, what do you think of my delicious meal? Yeah. My delicious meals are liked by everybody because yes. my delicious meals are delicious. Yes. That's what's going on here. Yes. Fine traditional Chinese culture as opposed to what? I, I know. That's the thing. That, that implies there's bad ones. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And this, I, again, you know what? I think this might be a response to is we always used to hear them say like any Chinese CC excellent culture. Yeah. On CCP <laughs> media, they would say Chinese excellent culture, which yeah. doesn't make sense. So we yeah. always make fun of it on our show. Yeah. Like you don't say Chinese, Chinese excellent culture. Yes. What is that? Right. Yeah, exactly. And now it's fine uh, traditional culture. Yeah. Right? Chinese, Chinese. Fine traditional Chinese. Uh, oh, fine oh, wait, traditional I'm, Chinese culture. I, let's it's just rewind. It let's, stick. Let, let's rewind so we can get that part again. Sorry. Um, <laughs> yes. I, I love this Marxism crap. Marxism. Integrating the basic yeah. tenets of Marxism. Is it a Marxism? It's Marxism. It's not Marxism. Marxes, it's like Marxism. <laughs> it's like a disease. He like pulls it out. He <laughs> suffers from Marxism. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> He's got marks all over him. <laughs> Xi Jinping's not happy. He's pissing him off. These exhibits are classic publications of Marxism, localization, and modernization. <laughs> right. Actually, uh, the fine traditional Chinese culture. China's fine, fine traditional Chinese culture. Fine traditional Chinese culture. Fine traditional Chinese culture. Fine traditional Chinese culture. China's fine traditional culture. China's fine traditional culture. China's fine traditional culture. President Xi Jinping. President Xi Jinping. They love her, by yeah. the way, yeah. Shang Yang. This is the yeah, new darling, noted, for sure. Yes, they like they, they, they pick their favorites. Yes. As President Xi puts it, it's the root of Our English is very good. I think that's a good choice. Theoretical innovation. Yes. China's fine traditional culture is comprised of many important elements, as President Xi noted, which have formed the prominent features of Chinese civilization. This is so actually look at how dead. Can you go back two seconds? Okay, I'll go Just back two, two seconds. seconds. Just to look at this, because I'll show you how honest he is right here. Okay. Look at. <laughs> He's look like, at, look at her. She's like enthused because yeah. listen, 
I don't even know if she believes in any of this stuff, but she's doing her job and she's doing it with passion and she's got a high level position here. This is not what CCP Milk sought out to do. No, and you could you could absolutely tell because the next question she actually asks him, what do you like yeah. about uh, Chinese traditional yeah. culture? And he actually gives a, a, good a answer. valid answer. Yeah. A really good one. But hold on, because as soon as his answer's finished, I want you to guess what she's going to say. Yeah. Just guess. Just guess. Guess. Okay, I'm going to play it. All right? Many important elements, as President Xi noted, which have formed the prominent features of Chinese civilization. So which part of the Chinese culture do you appreciate the most? For me personally, it's China's four character idiomatic expressions. They're often derived from ancient stories, but they're also applicable to modern life. Yes, like President Xi himself often uses a lot of the <laughs> Oh my gosh! You know? This is you know, North Korea! It's terrible. Oh my gosh! You know, like, I, I love Chinese idioms, and I yeah. agree with CCP yeah, Milk CCP here. Milk's great. Yeah, yeah, like, he's obviously studied Chinese really well, yeah. okay? He's... He's obviously fascinated by yeah. the language and he's put his effort in. And a big part of right. learning the language is the idioms. And that's his favorite part yeah. are the idiomatic that's expressions. Valid. That's valid. Absolutely. But imagine someone asks you, what's your favorite part? And you're like, oh, it's this, the idiomatic. It's like, yes, just like Xi Jinping uses. Yeah. It's like oh, the whole video. It's like, what's like your that. favorite food? Oh, I like this or that cuisine. It's like, yes, like my delicious food, which is yeah. better. Yeah. It's terrible. It's, it's like nuts. demeaning. It's nuts. Everything. And the whole video is like this. Yeah. Everything has to be about bloody Xi Jinping. Oh my God. It's really where we're at now. Yeah. The whole country. Yeah. Every piece of media has got to be about that. It's about Xi Jinping. Cult of personality out the mm. wazoo. Yeah. It's dangerous. It is. You know, let's see where this ends up. Idiomatic expressions in hate speeches. Despite their different cultural roots, President Xi said Marxism and China's CCP fine though. traditional yeah, culture look at his face. are trapped. consistent yeah. with each other. Right, actually, uh, the fine traditional Chinese culture... China's fine traditional culture with fine traditional Chinese cultures. The fine traditional culture... China's fine traditional culture... Of China's fine traditional culture... President Xi Jinping... President Xi Jinping... As President Xi noted, Xi's application... President Xi noted... Yes, like President Xi himself often uses... As President Xi puts it... <laughs> That's wild that you cut that, but that's from one video. It's from one video, and I didn't like. No, I didn't repeat them, as in put like two of the same yeah, in yeah. the same batch. Yeah. That's what it was in this thirteen minute. By the way, they interviewed a bunch of losers in that thing, which also were just Xi Jinping this, Xi Jinping that. But I cut that all out. Yep. There's thirteen minutes of that, just their segments of speaking. You know, I open took that out. open invite to CCP Milk. I genuinely feel like he's trapped. Yes, open invite. You can come on our show. Mm -hmm. You can be a guest. You can tell the story of how you got trapped by the CCP. Yeah, because we would love to hear it. And you don't need to let your Chinese language ability go to waste. No. You can go to Taiwan. Yes, you could. Yes. You can freely speak and study yes. the real culture you could be a that real... was wiped out. Yeah, you've got that choice. You got it, dude. Yeah. CCP Milk, we got your back. Get out of there, man. Yeah, exactly. And you know, do an interview with us. We want yeah. to hear your story. Secretly, uh, get in touch with us. Yes. Yeah, we won't tell because then you'll be expelled. Or <laughs> well, just, he, get you know. in touch with us, and then when you leave, we'll do the interview. That sounds like a yeah. better plan. Okay, cool. All right, so now it's time for Soft Power Hour, everybody. This is where we talk about uh, how China's trying to change your mind. And this time, it's actually really sinister. Um, and why don't you take this away? What are we looking at over here? All right, this is... I'm going to okay. not get too angry. Mm -hmm. uh, because to me, this is like... It's absolutely insulting and insane right. that China's getting away with this. Yeah. So it turns out China has made AI content, right? Mm -hmm. AI content about how bad America is. And it's one thing to do this, right? But it's another thing to make AI fake content videos to polarize Americans for Americans, right? Yes. This content isn't for Chinese people in Chinese, right? Mm -hmm. This isn't to say like in this part for the course for North Korea, Russia, China, those countries, yeah. Iran, right? You have uh, media creators within those countries for state media that will do domestic language media and be like, America's bad, don't worry, we have it really good off here, you're fine. Sure. That's understandable in an authoritarian dictatorship. Correct. I'm not saying it's right, I'm saying mm -hmm. it's part of the what course. what they do, yeah. To make media, fake media, AI created media in English for Americans, not about China, about their own country from a propaganda department in China at the top level of the propaganda bureau in China, the Chinese government. Yeah. To divide, polarize, and sever ties amongst Americans 
and cause them to think differently uh, potentially about who they might want to vote for yeah. or who they, you know, what issues they should care about amongst in their own country is insanity to me that that is allowed on Western social media. Well, yeah, I think at the end of the day, the fact that it's being promoted yes. on Twitter, yeah. promoted on Facebook, yeah. on YouTube, on all of these Western social media, that's the problem with yeah. this. Because you can make your own, like, whatever crap that you want. But of to course, be able freedom to of speech, it, absolutely. Yeah. But to be a foreign adversarial government, to use and the government propaganda department to make this content yeah. and make it fake and for Americans. Yeah, and the thing is, they also try to hide it, yes. which we'll talk about. So let's just play a sl small clip from this. Picture this. The year is 2023. And it's a red letter day for American workers. Over 453,000 of them are standing up, signs in hand, from the bosom of the city. Anyway, we don't want to show too much propaganda, so we'll play this without the subtitles in the background. Yeah. This is all AI created, right? Yeah. This is to make Americans hate their country, be dissatisfied, dissatisfied with it, cause riots to, yes. to rise up. And it changed people's minds about domestic issues it's like, look, from the propaganda department in China. Yes. Using AI. Capitalism bad. Look how the government holds you down and all the big wigs and stuff. You know, it's like how is, America bad. <laughs> this is information warfare. Yes. This is not okay. Again, you can have See, a look dude. away. That, this whole po part yeah. um, about um, voting. Yeah. Okay. And they make it all look like, you know, American elites are... Uh, evil and all that, which, you know, maybe they are, who knows, but, you know, this is not their place to say. Take a look. They are, as in my opinion, doing election tampering here. Yeah. I mean, you know? think about it. You're trying to change people's views in America. By using AI. By using AI from an adversarial government's propaganda department. Yeah. So it's actually, that's, mm -hmm. that's the big point is that it's, like you say, it's the Chinese government, the Communist Party's propaganda department is allowed to do election interference on social media abroad. There should be regulations against this. That's so messed up because this like, this isn't some secret like account that slipped through. This again, we'll we'll dive into what this is in a second. This yeah. is official. Yeah. This is official from the CCP. That's right. Um barely trying to hide it, right? Uh, look so at they, the poor people fighting with Uncle Sam. It's so lazy too. Like the fact that they, they look, have at, to use look AI. at Obama over here trying to steal people's money or whatever. I don't Fat think Obama. That's Obama. I think whatever. That's Biden. <laughs> okay. Why is he black? Because it has shadow. No, I don't think so. Anyway, so this is what it's called. First voice is this new uh, news out? What is it? Social well, commentary out thing. But here's the thing. Look, there's irony here. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter. I'm still calling it we Twitter. We won't call it X. <laughs> YouTube, TikTok, WeChat, and Weibo. Yeah. Okay? First voice, this English language propaganda garbage that's AI generated that's being put out there and being promoted by the state, by the yes. way. Yes. It's also, I saw Chinese officials sharing this on Twitter. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it is Chinese. It's yeah. made by Chinese officials. <laughs> um, and it's this new thing called First Voice. Right? So yes. do you want to tell us what First Voice is? So let's look at this. I looked it up, right? Yeah. First Voice is CGTN. Chinese state media. China's biggest English, uh, one of China's most influential and biggest uh, English mm -hmm. language media outlets. It's run by the propaganda department in China. Right? Okay. This is, not, this is not a private company. It is, yeah. is a branch of the propaganda department yeah. for external influence. Yeah. To go and influence people in sovereign countries for their own Communist Party of China goals, yes. right? So keep that in mind. First voice is, in their own words, mm -hmm. CGTN's first voice provides instant commentary on breaking stories. The, the daily column clarifies emerging issues and better defines the news agenda, offering a Chinese perspective on the latest global events. So if you Google this, CGTN yes. first voice, you are probably like, you know what? I'd love to see that Chinese perspective on news. Yeah. I want to see that Chinese perspective. So okay. what is the first result that comes Says up? Lee Kemp. So I'm like, what's that? <laughs> Wait like a second. Like this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. Come on. Here we go. So this is the Chinese perspective. The first result. Yeah, the Chinese perspective is Lee Kemp. The U.S. has the best fake democracy in the world. So the Dude. Chinese perspective is a white guy from America? This is that... that Guy who claims to be a comedian that works for Russia, right? Yeah, yeah. This is that guy. I'll show you. It's that guy, right? Yeah. Oh so, my word. Uh, so 
China's been doing a ton of anti-America propaganda mm -hmm. about how America doesn't actually have a democracy because, again, what do we call this? This is projection, right? Yes, yes. When you have a country with the, the basically the least freedom score in the world, the lowest freedom yes. score in the world, nine out of 100 compared yeah. to America's like 83 or something, sure. right? There is no democratic value that exists in China. So the only thing they could do, right, to convince Americans that China has it better off and that they're actually a free country is just to use like token mouthpieces like this. Yes. And it's just so funny to me that China's AI first voice propaganda thing to divide Americans, the Chinese perspective that they're trying to offer is a white American. That's not a Chinese perspective. No, no. That is a tanky perspective. Yeah. All right, so let's take a look. So I found a, I found Times. a little, I found a little uh, like a conduit here, right? Yeah. So yeah. Global Times, another Chinese and English language outlet, yeah. right? It says, U.S. censorship makes Americans believe there's no context of Ukraine war, says Lee Camp of RT America after being shut down. So here's what happened. Yeah. For RT, Russia Today. <laughs> yes. Russian, Russian media, media. Russian state media. This this dude works for Russian state media. Yeah. Okay. Russian state media got shut down in America. Yeah. Well, RT America. Did. Yeah, RT America. That yeah. one. Sorry. Um, and then what happened to him? Well, let's go to the next thing, because there's some context here. It's pretty funny how this works. It's kind of ubiquitous. It says, okay. after RT America, shut, by the way, if you go to RT, Russia Today's website, Russian state media. He's still there. Is uh, He's on there. It says, Lee Camp. Yeah. After RT America shut down in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Camp blamed the U.S. government war machine for the end of the network. So that Global Times article that you just saw, the Chinese st state media thing, was mm -hmm. a great conduit because after Russia, after he didn't can't do the Russia thing anymore, he moved straight to Chinese state straight. media. And it just shows seen how this they so yeah. many times. Yeah. Oh my gosh, there's so many of these guys that start with Russia Today or one of those outlets. Mm -hmm. And then something happens or they, they get a higher paid job or whatever and they end up in China. Because Russia and China collude with each other. Russian state media, Chinese state media, they work together. It's one big propaganda machine. It's a big anti-America propaganda machine. Yes. And yes. they utilize these useful idiots like this particular guy. I like how he's a com I try to watch some of his stuff. Where he's, he's supposed not a to be comedian. a comedian. You got to be funny to be a comedian. Talking about like horrible, how horrible America is, <laughs> yeah, is it's not, not comedy. It's not funny. Yeah, totally praising America, China and Russia is not, it's not funny. He, mm -hmm. he. He didn't even make jokes about it. No, he's, there's no he's jokes. He's literally just like America's fake democracy. Yeah, and, he goes like, like, I, this is paraphrasing, but it'll be something like, uh, America says it's a free country, but actually it's not. <laughs> and then that's <laughs> Love the joke. track, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's like, what? Do you, what? That's not a comedian, dude. That's a traitor. Apparently, if you go like this, like in, you're mm. in the 90s or something, like a 90s like magazine shoot. He's kind of got that 90s hair going, <laughs> he though, does, let's be honest. He? What's this on CGTN? Lee Camp, well, the U.S. is an oligarchy ruled by an elite business <laughs> So class. again, he gets like passed. Like Russia? <laughs> he gets pat yeah, literally. Yeah. He gets passed from Russia to China. And this is such a funny case study. Is that Remember yeah. why we we're showing you this? Mm -hmm. Is that this AI divide America, America bad party, mm -hmm. you know? This whole propaganda campaign that we just saw CGTM put out under the guise of first voice. Yes. The first result that comes up is, is this, this dude. Russia Today guy. Russia okay. Today guy. I just want to quickly um, take a look at this subtitle they have here. <clears throat> I mean, on the actual thumbnail, it says American comedian Lee Camp. And then it's like, colon. The U.S. is an oligarchy ruled by an elite business class. Now, normally when you have a subtext, you know, you'll say like doctor, so on, PhD in anthropology, and then like he'll talk about an, an anthropological yeah. subject, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Or you'll be like botanist, and yeah, then he's yeah. talking about Trees the rainforest or, or something. American comedian. Why does he have any authority to talk about anything? And a comedian doesn't have an authority on on, on freaking geopolitics. No, but he's a geopolitical expert. They, that's the way they yeah. frame it. But they're they're using American comedian yes. as his accolade. What this is? What is, the hell? What this actually is is Russia Today sloppy seconds yes. says. <laughs> Clown so, says, yeah. you know, may as well. I mean, a comedian is kind of a jester or a clown, right? Yeah, I, I love comedians, but you're not a no. This, this is not expert. a comedian that I love. I'm waiting for a joke. I also think that they've uh, they they don't know the definition of comedian when they've used it in this context. Well, let's be honest; these aren't the funniest countries in the world. <laughs> no, this to is them, not. this is the funniest guy in the world. They're yeah. like, 
he's a boy and has long hair? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he like told this joke. He's like, a man walks into the bar, walks yeah. into a bar, ouch, my oh, head. And they're like, oh, and they're like oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> a comedian. We can use this you guy. Know what's, you know what's the definition of a comedian to me? A what? guy that works for state media that has to toe the party line and he can't make any jokes. That's a comedian, apparently. Absolutely, yeah. Love it. Oh, well, you know, there we go. So, so anyway, that is this the... is just another example. This is not just one. Oh, yeah. No, they, there's, they there's... put a lot out, yeah. see? First voice, and they're like, the American dream is false and all this nonsense, right? This, to me, again, mm -hmm. I am absolutely in, in support of free speech. I have a problem when a country that doesn't have free speech yes. and blocks all of these things doesn't allow their citizens to make this. I love how they, they make it. Throw in the like the, the Hawaii wildfires and drug addicts and all Huge this. Huge disinformation campaign yeah. from Russia and China was the Hawaii fire thing. Do you guys remember that? Yeah. They infiltrated social media all over America to divide the, pop, the public. I mean, look at this kind of scene. You've got a crying firefighter who's like yeah. crying because yeah. they can't do their job or something. And a bunch of wealthy men sitting in a room laughing while the crying firefighter is on the TV. Yes. This is what China wants you to think is yeah. happening. Yeah. This is what they're injecting into, uh, you know, social discourse. In America, for yes, Americans. in America. That's my problem. Using a fake new thing, which is, doesn't say Chinese state media, it's his first voice. I want to finish my whole free speech thing. Yeah. If a Chinese person legitimately had these feelings and created art to want to do this and then put it on YouTube, even though they had to use a VPN to do it, by yeah. the way, because yeah. you can't go on YouTube yes. in China. Mm -hmm. If they had to do such a thing, I would support that because I think everyone deserves a right to free speech yeah. in the whole world, right? Yeah. My issue is that why is a foreign government only allowed to do this? Mm. So if you if China wants to make this kind of stuff from a government level yeah. to, to hurt America and hurt Americans, okay. But let your citizens use the internet then. Let your yes. citizens have free speech then and, and access to unfettered internet. When you do that, then I'm fine with it, right? Yeah. You can't block your citizens off and use your propaganda department to hurt another country. That's wrong. And don't use AI. And that's 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 the worst part of this. It's like literally, mm -hmm. and you know what they used? They obviously used like a Western AI model mm -hmm. to do it as well, which is even more mm -hmm. insulting. Yeah. Don't use AI. There's no skill involved there. There's no art involved there. They didn't write a script. They just made AI make this for them, which is super insulting. This needs to be dealt with. Yes. This needs to be dealt with in some way. I think social media platforms owe it to their audience to completely like disclaim, this is from the Chinese propaganda department. Generated in AI, AI generated. Yeah. And you need to know that this is this intent of this is to divide the populace of America. Yeah. Because that's what it is. Absolutely. But a big disclaimer on it at the very least. Yes. Uh, okay, now, um, this is something that has just recently come to uh, light, is that, um, you know, the Chinese army, they don't beat around the bush, okay? What they do is they, instead of doing a training exercise to teach their soldiers to be better at, uh, I don't know, urban warfare or something, they just literally copy the area that they want to attack and put it in the desert. Yeah. And what they've done now is they've... Uh, put the whole layout of all the streets around the Taiwanese presidential office. Uh -huh. They've actually got the whole roadmap. They've recreated it. They've recreated a lot of stuff so that the soldiers can actually just train to attack the Taiwan presidential palace. That's right. Which is, you know, it's very on the nose. Um, Chinese soldiers training for war. While exercises like these are a daily part of China's military training, this specific drill caught the eyes of many in Taiwan. Footage from China's military shows an exercise using mock-ups of real streets and buildings in Taiwan. This one simulated an attack on a district next to the country's biggest airport. Mock-ups of Taiwan's presidential office have even been spotted being overrun by Chinese forces. China sees Taiwan as part of its territory and has long threatened to bring the country under its control with military force. But using mock-ups is not a new tactic. China has been using these fake targets to get their soldiers familiar with the battlefield for years. And it's not just Taiwan mock-ups. Satellite images in 2021 also showed China practicing how to target U.S. warships in the Gobi Desert. It's all part of Beijing's plan to provide as realistic combat training as possible to its forces. 
when you see the thing for the first time that you're not familiar with, your responses is not going to be the same as, you know, as basically what you respond, what you think you would respond. And a lot of militaries, not just the Chinese, went to extraordinary length to, you know, to combat this. While for decades Taiwan has focused on coastal defense, analysts say little attention has been paid to other areas like urban warfare. They say that while the main focus for Taiwan's military has been keeping China from landing on its territory, there isn't much planning for what would happen if Chinese soldiers do make it onto the streets. It is definitely a warning sign that Taiwan would have to increase its training and how it aims to actually counter urban warfare. I don't think we've, uh, Taiwan you know, as a country has actually uh, thought about urban warfare seriously. Right? There's a lot that can be done to make, you know, to make basically the urban environment into a hellhole uh, for the enemy. And uh, frankly, that's not something that we've seen a lot of discussion. Using Taiwan-style mock-ups in China's military training serves a big operational purpose, but it's also meant to instill fear in Taiwan's population. While China is open about what it's targeting, it could give Taiwan an insight into what a conflict might look like. But Taiwan's toughest task is assuring its defense strategy prevents these images from becoming reality. John Su and Jaime Ocon for Taiwan Plus. I guess that was from Taiwan Plus, but it's not just that, right? It's not just the uh, mock-ups of Taiwan invasion. Sure. Uh, by the way, that mock-up looked terrible. Obviously, it's a, it's a Chinese knockoff. <laughs> it's okay, true. it's not going to look good. One thing I got to say is, you know, I think the Chinese PLA is going to get such a surprise when they go to attack an American aircraft carrier and realize you cannot walk on the water. <laughs> They're going to be like, wait. I thought it was supposed to be sand. Exactly. Because they're building aircraft carriers. No, I mean, it's obviously US, for attacks, yeah. Yeah, U.S. Navy aircraft carriers, they're building them in the uh, in the sand in Xinjiang yeah. to for target practice. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's going to be for aerial bombing yeah, and stuff like that. That I get it. I'm just being facetious. But at the same time, you know, it's just kind of hilarious. Mm. Um, but you see this in China a lot. You know, they put those straw men in Japanese uh, uniforms to stab with bayonets yeah. and stuff. Yeah. It's like, it's just kind of tasteless. Kind of. Yeah, it's kind of tasteless. Yeah. You know, like no military in the world like is. A uh, wine bottle. <laughs> it does look like a wine bottle that's got a chip on the bottom. It does. Yeah, it does. A chip on his shoulder. Yeah, it does. The thing is, it's like, okay, you set up a target if you're doing military practice, but it's kind of in poor taste to sit, like, I don't know, put Xi Jinping or something and yeah, shoot I mean, him. You don't do you that. Don't do that. You, you don't, don't do that. You don't put, like, the, the Zhongnan Hai or something yeah. and create that and go and no. blow it up. It's just kind of childish. It's childish and petty. And it's obviously like a psyop, right? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like they want people to look and be like, "Yes, they're they're practicing for invading." So them. you know, the main topic of the show is that China's taking steps closer to World War Three, and this mm. is one of them. Mm. Okay, what they're doing here—it's just showing malice and yeah. ill intent. You yeah. know, what's the next thing that we've got lined up here? Well, it's just showing the rest of this. So satellite images appear to show China's built mock-ups of the U.S. Navy aircraft carrier and destroyer in the northwestern desert, some which I believe are intended for. Target practice. target practice. I mean, of course they are. The independent U.S. Naval Institute said the mock-ups in the Telemachan Desert were part of a new target range developed by the People's Liberation Army. So you can see this vast desert. This is where they had the Dakar rally, I believe, at one point. Oh, no, the Telemachan rally. Wouldn't be the Dakar rally because yeah. Dakar's not I in China. I get it, all right? I meant the ver their version of it. Sure. Right, the Telemachan rally. We actually knew people that participated. Yeah, exactly. I wonder if it was any good. Yeah. I like, but here they've got it on like a railroad, so they can obviously move it yeah. and shoot at a moving target, you know? Yeah. I wonder if they have little boats with wheels on it that they can drive around in the sand like a dune buggy or and drive was, around next to it and be like, rrr, 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 and they shoot from the boat. I think you should say a land speeder because it's way yeah. cooler. <laughs> yeah, well, they wouldn't do that. They just <laughs> they would just take a boat and put wheels on it. Uh, some people like Xingqiu Dajian. Da, da yeah, uh, yeah. The images captured by Colorado-based satellite imagery company Maxar Technology show the outlines of what appears to be a U.S. aircraft carrier and at least one destroyer sitting on a railway track. Again, they're going to be very disappointed when real war happens yes. and the boats aren't on a train track. Yeah, exactly. And they yeah. can't drive next to it and shoot yeah. at it. Yeah. <sighs> yep. 
Uh, China's foreign ministry said it was unaware of the reports. Of course they do. <laughs> China's upgraded its navy in recent years as tensions rise of the South China Sea, Taiwan, and military supremacy in the Indo-Pacific, which is going to be relevant in what we're talking about soon. I like how China just flat out denies everything when there's actual proof. Yes. Dude, I find the same thing when I release a video and I show actual video footage in my, in my video yeah. from China <clears throat> in Chinese with Chinese writing on it. And they're like, that doesn't happen. Yes. This guy's biased hates China. No, it's yeah. just truth. Deal with it. Can you make us big and then skip to the last part because we're on a schedule here. Oh, are we on a yeah, schedule? Are you time. sure? Yes. Okay, fine. Um, Which part? If this? you guys want to hear about the whole hack thing, go mm -hmm. to my video on Lao86. Um, are we doing this one? We don't, no, we don't have time to cover that. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, fine. Okay, now go back to the uh, okay, yeah. stuff. All right, so now here's the next thing. So it starts with the foreign ministry. This? It starts with the foreign ministry. Just play it and see what happens. You hear this? Uh, this this is the first. No, not that. Yeah, this. this. Okay. okay. Let's right. see what the four, China's foreign ministry said about what's happening. By the way, we have a new foreign ministry spokesperson over yeah. here. This is the new Lin open Jin. hand boy. By the way, this is what the Chinese uh, foreign ministers do is because they, you know, no, they you. heard on the, on the playground field that, you know, like when you're pointing at someone, <laughs> you've got three fingers pointing back at you. Right? So like... We're going to game the system. We're just going to point all of our fingers. See? And they're using that play, play yard, uh, playground tactic, right? <laughs> anyway, let's continue on. This is some nonsense, okay? So this is the new guy. I don't like him. I prefer, you know, Zhao Lijian. I thought he was much cooler than this guy. Don't you? Cooler? Yeah, he was way cooler. In what way? Like the Kool-Aid guy bursting through a wall? No, I mean, he, he was, was like, obnoxious. he's more charismatic. In a horrible way. Yeah. This guy's more down to business. Yeah. Can we say, see what this guy says? It's very important. Yeah, sure. What does he say? He says, who is making repeated provocative gestures in the South China Sea? It's you? Question mark. Who is violating the consensus of both parties on their own commitments? Question mark. You. <laughs> no, I'll show you who. Okay, all right. I'll ruin the joke. All right. Who is directing and acting on their own to exaggerate tension? Who is the one getting foreign forces involved? Well, let's, let's have a look. Hmm. Oh. oh, I guess it's uh, oh. China. Yikes. Okay, so we've talked about this before. This poor little Filipino boat. It's like, oh no. The foreign minister asked all those questions not thinking someone's just going to cut this footage afterwards. Yeah, exactly. They're literally <laughs> like blasting and ramming these boats. Look, that that is a ram and that is a, a freaking blast. So for those of you who don't know, the Philippines has a, a, a ship, okay? And it's in the Scarborough Shoal, right? Mm -hmm. So it's this ship that's been grounded on a on a sh coral reef basically mm -hmm. and because it's there they have sort of a legitimate presence in the area mm. okay because it belongs to the philippines but mm. china's like no the entire south china sea belongs to us they just made that up by the way and even an international court ruled against their claims mm. okay so the philippines has every right to be there and they have troops stationed on that big ship that's you know, beached out there. So they have to send supplies to them. Otherwise, they're just going to starve, right? They need food. They need water. They need whatever other supplies they might need. So they send supply vessels out there every once in a while. China, rather than just, you know... Just play the footage in the background. Yeah, rather than just blocking them maybe and saying like, no, you can't go there because we claim it, they actually just attack these boats now. So they ram them. They shoot them with water cannons. They do all this dastardly stuff, which, by the way... I think under most circumstances would be considered an act of war to attack another vessel with a cannon. Okay, it's a water cannon, but it's still a cannon. Yeah, I think that's like the lowest, the highest threshold of not being an act of war. I mean, they literally are injuring and damaging. Yeah. They're injuring Filipino, um, you know, Navy. Navy. They are fishing vessels. destroying the their <laughs> property, you know, like this. And uh, that's not okay. They're the ones provoking and raising tensions because they could just let that little boat go. You know, the little boat that could. See that little ramshackle thing? It could have gone there. Could have given them their food. All they want is their food. But no, China Coast Guard has to come around and 
really mess about. It's not fair. He's like China's funniest home videos over here. Like, <laughs> yeah, it is. Or, this, uh, let's spray him. That'll get him good. Yeah, let's, exactly. We'll win the 10,000 RMB prize. <laughs> yep. But yeah, they, they're damaging these uh, vessels. and you know, they, sea bullies. They could potentially sink them too. Anyway, um, the reason why we added this to the what China is doing to escalate World War III is this is what's ramping up tensions. Yes, and I would like to read uh, the response from the Filipino president, Marcos, Yeah, uh, which is coming up here after we see this amazing footage of all these rams and these sprays. Yeah, ram sprays. Yep. A lot of ram sprays going on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they're very rude. They're, they're really, being real rude. They're rude and they're rough <laughs> and they're... You know, taking the piss, really. I'll show you what's taking the piss, really. Mm -hmm. What's is that? Is the claim, and I and I have to bring this up every time we, should, we talk about this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. The claim that China makes over the South China Sea is just absurd. Yeah. And I have a map just to remind everyone coming up here. It's truly look, absurd. Look, they're waving the white flag. Yeah, even. they're like, can we give up? Yeah. This is absurd. Like, look at China's up here, all the way at the top, right? Yes. See that line, that nine-dash line? Mm -hmm. That's what they claim. That's around all of Vietnam, up to their coast, mm -hmm. Malaysia, Philippines, encircling Taiwan. Yes. <laughs> a sovereign country, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of those uh, uh, red triangles are already military bases and artificial islands used for yeah. military purposes after they said they wouldn't do Yeah, that. remember they said we won't militarize the South China Sea. What did they do? Look they at built this. the artificial islands and they militarized them straight away. Look at this. And the yellow is international waters, That's... which they claim. Yes, it's all the way up on Philippines coast. Look mm -hmm. at the right side of this photo. Yeah. It's that's the Philippine coast. It's crazy. They claim everything. Yep. You it's know? really intense. Um, and the fact that people just kind of let them get away with it. Again, everything that the Chinese government has said has been a lie. Yeah. They said with their agreement with Hong Kong that they would leave it alone for 50 years and it would be a one country, two systems. No, they didn't leave it alone. What, look what look at what happened to it now. It is now just part of China. They've yes. messed with the government. They've put in these national security laws so people can't talk, you know, have freedom of speech anymore. Mm. They messed with that. So they broke that. Uh, they, they broke that promise. They, again, said they weren't going to militarize the South China Sea. What did they do? Mm. Militarize the South China Sea. What did they say? They said that they would reduce pollution and whatnot. Mm. Nope, they didn't mm. do that at all. They said they would crack down on um, illegal counterfeiting and things like that. Nope, they didn't do that at all. I mean, look, they just released that taken copy and it's being applauded and lauded. You know, they, everything they say has been a lie. There's not one thing that China has actually said, the government, that they've actually, you know, to the international community, that they've stuck to. No. Not one thing. So you can look through it historically. Nothing positive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Go look. If you look through all these big commitments that the Chinese government has promised to make, your transparency, this and that, and the next thing, it's all nonsense. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so you've got this quote from... Uh, Marcos Bongbong. Marcos. Bon, his name is Bongbong. Bong. No, it's President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. His nickname is Marcos Bong Bong. Okay. Anyway, it says, Over the succeeding weeks, there shall be implemented by the relevant national government agencies and instrumentalities a response and countermeasure package that is proportionate, deliberate, and reasonable in the face of an open, unabating, and illegal, coercive, aggressive, and dangerous attacks by the agents of China Coast Guard and the Chinese Maritime Militia. Thank you very much. Yep. Uh, I'm going to do an update on the Philippines at some point, update video, because Marcos has turned out to be a fantastic leader in the face of Chinese aggression. Yeah, um, which a lot of the Philippine uh, pu public didn't believe would happen. Mm. So it's been a great uh, kind of like, I'm happy to be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's been fantastic. And he's been um, unabashedly strong against China's face of aggression. Which has been yeah. Great. And I think we can all see not only from the footage, but just you, you can look, look it up. You don't have the Filipino Coast Guard or fishermen firing no. water cannons no. at Chinese vessels. It's a one-way one aggression. Yeah. It's only the Chinese yes. Coast Guard and the Chinese maritime on the, militia. On the coast of the Philippines. Yes, right on the coast, <laughs> attacking fishing boats and attacking supply vessels and things. It's a one-way aggression. And then this, again, is another reason why China is pushing closer and closer to World War III. Because you know what's going to happen is if things do kick off and Bong Bong over here... This is such a weird name. But anyway, if Bong Bong, um, he must be great at a party, decides that he's really going to go forward, he's going to call in the U.S. allies to help. we have a defense pact. You have a defense pact. That it potentially could kick off World War Three. So we're looking at... Uh, Taiwan or this. Taiwan, where they're mocking up, you know, storming the presidential palace and yeah. shooting mock-up bits and pieces of Taiwan. And then we've got this, where they're aggressively attacking 
the Philippines all the time on the water. Both of these are very, very close. And of course, we've got that big hack thing they've been doing. China is officially trying to instigate U.S. allies in the Pacific. Yes, they're trying to kick off World War III. Mm. It's like their fault. within their own schematic of how they think it'll go. Yeah, it's their, it's their fault. They're yes. antagonizing. It doesn't need to be this way. No. You know? No. It's Stick- really, really, really serious because this, mm-hmm. this is like amongst all that speculation about is M- M- uh, President Marcos going to take China's side or is he going to take the U.S. side? There was all that speculation. The Philippines was up in arms about it, mm-hmm. right? This has pushed it so far in the favor of U.S.-Philippines allyship that it's not even funny. Yeah. Everyone in the Pacific that has their head on their shoulders at this point is siding with America right now because of how insane and unhinged China has become. Yeah, they're just bullies. Un- unpredictable bullies. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It's insane. I mean, remember when they fired all the missiles into the sea in Operation Fish Kill mm. over and over? Yeah. They're sending like uh, spy balloons yeah. just to fly around all yeah. over the world. It's, come on, guys. Chill out a little the, bit. The, the true... Hacking the infrastructure in America so that they can disrupt yeah, power Yeah, that's my border. video. I, we were going to cover it here, but I covered it very thoroughly. But if you yes. want to know about how China was living in America's in- infrastructure through hacking, mm. hacking dissidents and politicians... And infrastructure. And infrastructure and 40 million voter records of British citizens mm. and how they got caught, yep. then go check out Lao 86. Absolutely. Yeah, your latest video. It's a good one. Anyway... Even Vietnam starting to be nice to America. Well, they were already nice, but yeah. like, like a like ideologically opposed country. Like everyone in the Pacific's like China. Can you not do this? Mm-hmm. They're really bad diplomatically. Yeah. What's going on with this? Taiwan's top diplomat said you. Oh, it's just USA. a good article. Uh, it says Taiwan's top diplomat says USA to Ukraine is critical for deterring China. So uh, the foreign minister Joseph Wu said in an interview that Russian a Russian victory. So if Russia wins Ukraine, yeah. right. It can embolden China to move against Taiwan and would fuel anti-American propaganda. Completely agree with this because yes. China has been using the Ukraine invasion as a litmus test yeah. to see how that's going to go. Mm-hmm. And if it goes the way that Russia wanted it to go in the beginning, yeah, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, exactly. They're going to do it. Oh, well, I guess we can do the Taiwan thing. Well, that was the whole thing. Xi Jinping... Um, <clears throat> And uh, and Russia, remember, it was just before the invasion. Yeah. They got together and had a yeah. big, like, extend our friendship forever type thing. Yes. And what was happening was they probably colluded together and Xi Jinping was like, okay, go ahead, attack Ukraine. You say you can take it in a couple of weeks. This is a great case study. If you do that, then we'll do Taiwan. Yeah. And they waited and they saw Russia fail and not take it within a couple of days or a week. And then they're like, ah, uh, let's shit. pump the brakes a little yeah. bit. Let's think about this Taiwan thing. Because if Russia's suffering, this big, yeah. powerful country, we're going to also suffer. Yeah. It's um, a huge litmus test. Yeah. Ta- the Taiwan foreign ministry is absolutely correct. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there are, that's, Taiwan has its own intelligence, right? They're watching, they know what China's trying to do here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They know what they're watching. They know China better than anyone. Yeah, for sure. What's this uh, scary picture you've put up <laughs> This here? is our, our last five videos. On this channel. On this channel. Yes. Just just showing that out there. Not doing the whole like e-bagging thing. Oh, you mm. guys go to support us. Well, what I want to do is shout out our patrons that get Xiaoban Ho, our extra show every Monday. Yeah. Because you guys help make this we can deal with it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, just just so everyone knows, the China show we get hit all the time, demonetized and copyright claims. Yeah. Every single episode, as you can see. Five um, in a row now. But yeah, five in five a row. In a row. So yeah. shills celebrate and uh, <laughs> reasonable people, you know, just know what we have to deal with. And know that you can support us at patreon.com slash ADV podcast. You get a whole nother show every Monday. Call us Xiaobanho. Mm-hmm. It's a very fun Flat, show. Flat Cat McDonald's is going to order a Happy Meal. <laughs> You know, it's like, yes, they've been demonetized. Yeah. Yeah. Give me some extra nuggets. Well, our reward is we don't have to work for Chinese state media (laughs) or any state media. We can say whatever the F we want. Exactly. (laughs) So anyway, guys, um, here we have uh, a preview of what you may have missed on our Monday show, which is our VIP show. So let's just show you quickly. (laughs) That's my ass, bro. Stop. That's awesome. It's creating the nipple. You're yeah. making the nipple, not hiding the nipple. <clears throat> Sometimes the nail clippers aren't strong enough because your nails are big super, enough. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Oh, yes. Yeah, that works. That's <laughs> epic. That's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's looking pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> what the? <laughs> it's not a children's gift. You're like, hey, Timmy, I got you, you know, Chernobyl. <laughs> it's yeah. like, oh, my favorite, Chernobyl. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is amazing. I love this guy. Uh, yeah, yeah, so. That uh, episode 90 was last Monday. 
I was yeah. about China's useless yet hilarious inventions. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted to highlight. I, I really like that. Amazing, yeah. fun ingenuity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to support us and you want a whole show every single week and access to every show we've ever done, yeah, go to patreon.com. Slash, slash ADV, podcast. ADV podcast and join the Shaban Ho tier That's right. if you have the means, of course. Of course. And uh, it's again due mm. to our very core VIP audience that supports us on Patreon. Uh, and I mean, obviously, everybody who watches it, every member of you out there who's watching us right now, are the reason why we can do this. But that core support on Patreon allows us to take this this financial hit. Yes, and at mm -hmm. the same time, don't forget this show that you get every Monday. Mm -hmm. It's live. And democratic. So you vote on the next topic. That's you can right. do topic suggestions. We answer all of your questions. We have That's a proper right. Q&A every episode. Correct. And it's a, it's basically a fun party mm. while we cover a certain topic that you voted on. Correct, yeah. And sometimes we overthrow the show and dictatorially choose our own topics. Occasionally. Like, it happens, and then mm -hmm. you guys love it. Yeah. <laughs> this coming Monday's book club, which is going to be ah, ridiculous. Yeah. Book club. You're going to want to know what book club is. Because we don't even know what it is yet. But <laughs> Monday, Monday, we'll figure it out. Anyway, guys, it's time yes. for our uh, Yamcha segment, which, of course, is our Q&A segment. This is where we answer your questions and you question our answers. We hope you've enjoyed the show so far. For those of you who are watching live and on the weekend, well, stick around. And for those of you who are watching it next week, we'll catch you later. If you are a patron of any um, size, you can watch the full show. Yes. Okay, anyway, and it's time to... hopefully we'll see you on uh, show by now. Yeah, time to loosen the ties. So stay awesome if you're not sticking around, and uh, let's get on with it. Yes. Mm. Uh, oh, yeah, with some gifts. Thank you for gifting all those memberships. 